Okay, today I want to show you the Faber Castell perfect, perfect Pencil. I used the Perfect Pencil in the Castell 9000 dark grey for quite a while. And unfortunately a few months ago, or I think last year, uh, I lost it. And I, I posted about it in my vlog. And uh, John the Monkey mentioned that he's using the junior version. I think he meant this version. I'm not 100% sure, but this is this is a very cheap version. There are lots of different versions of the... Oh, someone's knocking on the door just a moment. Yeah, I'm not sure where I, where I stopped. Um, that was a parcel for my wife. So, uh, this is the very cheap version. Um, John the Monkey said that he's using the junior version. Maybe that's this version. Uh, on the other hand, there, there are children versions. There's the Faber-Castell Faber Perfect Pencil for Kids. And Alberto Lung talked about it on his blog. Uh, then the... You know the, the the cap looks like a like a chicken or something like that. There are also uh, higher priced versions than the Castell 9000. Even though personally I like the Castell 9000 version most. Um, so th they are with aluminium, and then there are the really posh ones from the Grafon Faber Faber Castell line. Uh, Sean, uh, you know who has the Blackwing pages? He used to have a blog called Pencils and Music and he talked about the predecessors there. And a Pencil Talk also talked about the, the posh versions in the past. And they can be quite expensive. There's a version with diamonds and white gold. But uh, the, the the cheaper Graf von Faber-Castell versions there, I think these days they are just under 200 quid a few years ago. There were a hundred quid, so uh, uh, you know that's um, maybe hundred fifty bucks, two or three hundred bucks uh, now. Uh, but this is this is the cheapest version. I bought this one in Shanghai many years ago, and I think I paid twenty uh, twenty kwai, or, or maybe even less. So twenty kwai is roughly two quid, so that's roughly three bucks. Um, one thing, or one of the things I like about buying products in China is that usually you see where the products are made from. So on, on the shelf there should, would usually be a, a sticker which which country or sometimes even which city the products are made from. And you also usually see when products are made. Not only for food, also with products like this. So I assume... Can I zoom in? I assume this one is made 28th of December 2010. Uh, there's not much I can read here. Uh, this is something about Canton. So I don't know whether it's the place of manufacture or the headquarters. And here it says uh, that blue black. So I assume that's the different versions um, available. So I, I got the blue one. I don't know how easy that is to see in this light. And uh, eight millimeter. I assume that refers to the fact that uh, most Pencils have a diameter of seven and a half, uh, seven or up to eight millimeters. So I think they just talk about what kind of what kind of pencil fits. So after I lost my uh, Castell 9000 perfect pencil, which is dark green, I got this black version that was a limited edition only available in Japan, as far as I know. And it comes with the same pencil as the cheap one comes with. Uh, I guess it's okay, but I prefer the Castell 9000. The good thing here is, though, that I can put uh, whatever pencil I want in. Um, I don't know where my stub now is, but you know, you could you could put a nice Northeast in or whatever you like. Yeah, so let's have a look at this one. Uh, like I said, I paid 20 kwai, about 2 quid. I think if you buy it these days, in the UK, I think they, they are about 3 quid. So they are, they are quite cheap. So let's have a look. So you got an eraser, obviously that's part of your pencil. So if you have a pencil that's not eraser tipped, you don't uh, get an eraser. 
And the whole point about this is that you've got the point of the pencil protected and you got a sharpener with you if you need to sharpen your pencils. Um, yeah, maybe a bit more friendly than if you take out your pocket knife and start sharpening with your pocket knife or you might not have a pocket knife with you so uh, this is quite nice and uh, this is a bit loose here but doesn't matter so the reason why I'm packing why I'm unpacking this is that um, you know if I lose this one there's this it's not so bad the, the Castell 9000 one I lost I mean I, I used it for a few years but I bought it in Müller, I think it was 8 euros or something like that, so a bit more expensive. Okay, for some reason my Nexus stopped recording again. I guess I need to find some other solution to record videos in the future. Um, yeah, you know, obviously you, you can buy shorter pencils or you can just use pencils that you used up over time. Uh, one thing that's not so great about this cheaper version I think is the fact that it's much bigger size wise so it will take up more space in your shirt pocket or wherever you put it so yeah, it's, not, it's not bad looking and there's a slightly similarly looking aluminium version but I like I like uh, this plastic version or the Graf von Faber Castell version more um, yeah, they have this nice uh, top that's going a bit wider. Uh, I can quickly show you one of the predecessors. And yeah, silver tarnish, so yeah, I haven't cleaned it for a while. So th this is one of the predecessors. Um, it didn't come with a sharpener. I got this on very cheap on eBay for a while, so it has lots of scratches um, yeah you just have a pencil point protector no sharpener in this version and here's your eraser which is uh, replaceable yeah, yeah th those things they used to be quite cheap on eBay um, a few years ago but they got much more expensive like most Luxury articles uh, got more expensive. Okay, but you you can see you know this this top that that gets wider. I find that quite uh, good looking. Certainly, uh, better looking than this version. But the good thing with this version is if you lose it, you know you, you only lost uh, two uh, three quid or three four bucks or what whatever it costs. Maybe you can still get them cheaper. Let's try the sharpener, not that the pencil point needs sharpening. Yeah, very easy to use. Um, should have prepared some paper. Yeah. Okay, let's take. Oh, this is. Let's take this one. I can show it anyway. Uh, this is a uh, Hobonichi paper. And it's handmade. I'm opening the wrong side, am I not? Yeah, uh, lo lots of the things you've seen, or lots of the pictures you've seen on my blog, they were actually from, uh, they were actually uh, things I drew in here. Uh, that was the uh, tactile turn gist. Um, yeah. Usually when I, when I draw some picture for a blog post, I put it here. This is a Hobonichi card. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a card uh, that you are using if you have a Hobonichi planner with the Tomo River paper, is it called Tomo River paper? I think uh, because the paper is so thin, otherwise, you know, you have dents in, in, in the next page from your pressure, so you can put uh, this in between. And this, this um, I, I got this from Michael, who has the Korolatov block. 
and the notebook with saddle stitch is handmade by uh, Shang Ching from the East West Everywhere block. So why did I start this? I, I thought I'll, I'll try it out. So um, hello, this is a test. Hmm, yeah, I mean, the pencil is nice. Uh, the eraser, not so. It looks like it, the black eraser. If I just erase on the paper alone, it seems to be okay, but if I erase over graphite, it seems to leave some streaks. Um, let's write down what it is. Faber Castell, perfect pencil. Is there a model number? Usually Faber Castell products have those six digit model numbers. Could be this, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, so I should plan those videos better. Didn't plan them. So I guess that's all I have to say about Faber Castell's perfect pencil.